Hi, I'm Chef Adam Dills, chef owner of Elwood Restaurant. So, sauerkraut season. Um, I love sauerkraut. One of my favorite things, one of my comfort foods is sauerkraut. These cabbages here are from my friend Ian at Green Meadow Farm. So to make sauerkraut, the first thing you want to do is when you get your cabbages, you want to peel away these outside layers that may have insects, bugs, slugs, all type of stuff you don't want. So make sure it's nice and clean. Peel away these outside layers. And then you're ready to shred your cabbage. So now I'm going to cut the sauerkraut or shred it. Um, one of the advantages to making your own sauerkraut is that you can make it as thin or as thick as you like. If you, most of the time when you buy it, it's uh, what I call hot dog sauerkraut, which is super, super finely shredded, which is fine. It works well for hot dogs, but if you prefer to have a bigger one, bigger cut, a little thicker, then you can do that yourself. Now you can also use a mandolin if you like. Um, back in the day, they used, the Pennsylvania Dish had these big ones, like this big, and they would take whole heads of cabbage and shred it like that. But I do it by hand. Um, certainly, I mean, I have a lot of cabbages, but so we're just gonna shred it up. Make sure you get rid of any discolored leaves or any anything that doesn't look right. Now the hearts, the cabbage hearts. I like them, I don't throw them away, I pickle them. Um, I really like cabbage hearts, so I save them, give them a little uh, pickle, and then I eat them later. So our next step after we have all our cabbage shredded, that's a lot of cabbage, but our next step is we want to salt the cabbage and stomp it into our bucket. I like to use buckets. If you have a smaller, you can use whatever if you have a smaller batch. Now you can either put salt in, salt over it, and work it like this, or you can just salt as you go. If you needed a recipe for it, I would say a ratio, a good ratio, will probably be about 1% weight of salt to your cabbage. Not, probably not much more than that. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna stomp. This here, this cabbage stomper was made for me by Liam's Luck Woodcraft up in Northeast of PA. But what you're gonna do is stomp this down. Now, you don't wanna pulverize it. You don't wanna smash it. But the idea is that you're bruising it enough. So the ideal sauerkraut is the juices from the cabbage come out, that forms your brine for the cabbage, so it makes a sauerkraut. So ideally, enough juice comes out so that you don't have to add water, but in like, I like to let it sit for two days and then see if it needs more water just to cover it, then we'll put more water. So, this is all you do, layer it, and then if you don't mix it up beforehand, you can always sprinkle salt. You're just looking to bruise the cabbage, like I said. You don't want to, you don't want to turn it into a, a paste. You just bruise it. And you want to continue to do that until you have cabbage all the way, as much cabbage as you can fit it into your container. Okay, so once you've got it salted, shredded, stomped, you're going to want to weigh it down. So if you have an old German crock, you can put uh, the stone weights that come with it. I like a, I just do a clean plate since I have a bucket like this, and then I'll fill a bag with water to weigh it down. You can put a little salt in there also in case there's a leak. You don't want it to ruin your brine, that you dilute your brine and stuff. So you just want to put it in a cool place about 50 to 60 degrees, not too hot, not too cold. And then you'll wait 
first you want to make sure in a day or two that the water or the, the brine natural juices has come up over the cabbage and if it hasn't you want to add water you want to make sure it's submerged and then you'll wait two to three weeks for it to ferment okay so it's been about a week and a half it's getting a little warm in here so i want to i want to check it out now i did after a day or, or it was about two days day and a half i checked it to make sure that it was submerged you want the cabbage submerged remember that's what's going to cause it to go bad as if it if you have it above air in the air and not underneath the brine so smells good looks good looks really good um yeah this is looking good so i can see bubbles coming up it's okay if the if it's cloudy too that means things are working so mm. oh yeah that's delicious so you got a good lacto fermentation like i said though it is getting a little warm in my prep kitchen so i think we're gonna I think we're gonna call it call it good so what that means is we will put it in see there we go we can take a look at that okay so that means you can you have two choices me personally we're gonna put the lid back on with the weight and everything put it in the walk-in where it's nice and cold under 40 degrees it'll still build flavors so it'll last a long time in there um, you could also, if you want to drain the juice off, pack it into canning jars and then can it per, you know, canning um, jar manufacturer's instructions. So you could do that. What I like to do is put it in, if you're having a small batch, like if it's a, just a jar you made, then just put it in the, your refrigerator. It'll be fine. Make sure it's always submerged, cover it with a cheesecloth, and then you'll have sauerkraut all winter. So this has been our video on sauerkraut. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you love sauerkraut as much as I do. Check out my website, www.elwoodrestaurant.com. Also, like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, Elwood Restaurant. Thank you.